Hello everyone, my name is Priyanka Goswami, Assistant Professor of GL Bajaj Institute of Management Research, Greater Noida. Today we are going to discuss lecture number 10, topic is organizing. So today we will discuss meaning of organizing, features of organizing, importance and procedure of organi or organizing and types of organization. So let's start with the organizing. So, today we are going to cover these topics, definition of organizing, importance of organizing, steps involved in organizing process and the types of organizing, organization. Let's start with the meaning of organizing. Organizing is the function of management which follows planning. Organizing is, a, is one of the, one of the uh, part of or the function of management which, which basically comes after the planning. Once the manager finishes his, uh, his planning, then only he has to organize the things. How we can organize? It is a function in which the synchronization and the combination of human, physical and financial resources takes place. It is the function where manager needs to synchronize the things. So, synchronize, uh, synchronize the resources, resources in, in, in the form of human, physical and the financial resources, where he uh, set the division, divides the work on the basis of their uh, employees specialization and on the basis of their work, he also allot the uh, res resources and the finance accordingly. So in this step only, he basically divides the authority and responsibility to the people and the resources which is needed by the employees. Third one is, according to Chester Bernard, organizing is a function by which the concern is able to define the role positions, the jobs related and the coordination between authority and responsibility. Organizing is a step where manager needs to define the roles that which person needs to do what. Right. And on the basis of his job, he has to, he has to uh, allot the responsibility and authority to those employees. And on the basis of that, he also tries to, uh, tries to co coordinate between the authority and responsibility which he has uh, allocated to those employees. So in organizing, basically, he defines the role that what person needs to do what work, right. And on the basis of that, he has to even, he has to even given the authority and responsibility to the people and making coordination among these authority and responsibility. According to Lewis Allen, organizing is the process of identifying and grouping the work to be performed. That means here they the manager has to identify that what work he has to do in the organization, right. So first he has to identify that what are the work he has to do or he has to get it done by the employees and on the basis of that he grouping the work that means he grouping the work then on the basis of division grouping the work means he has to divide the work into the small small groups and all on the basis of that he delegate the responsibility to the number of people or to the group of people and on the responsibility and authority because without authority person cannot uh, perform his responsibility so authority and responsibility both has to go simultaneously and establishing relationship for the purpose of enabling people to work most effectively together accomplishing objectives. And at the same time, after allotting authority and responsibility, he has to make a formal relationship among employees that which per person needs to report which person. That means who will be the supervisor in the organization and who will be the subordinate of that particular uh, candidate employee right so this kind of relationship that means establishment of formal relationship will also done in the organizing step organizing is a process of defining the essential relationship among the people that means in organizing only manager has to define the relationship the formal relationship between the employees that who who has to report to which person so this kind of uh, this kind of making relationship will be done in organizing only task and the activities that means which person will do what kind of task what kind of responsibility he has to take so this kind of arrangement basically done in the organizing step in such a way that all the organization resources are integrated and coordinated to accomplish the ob its objective efficiently and effectively Organ in organizing only while allocating the work to the people he has to see that what are their specialization in which they are excel so on the basis of that they have to divide the work they have to divide the authority and responsibility to the people so actually organizing is is very important uh, important function of management because in this only he has to allot the work to the people so that they can work uh, they can work the perform their work efficiently and effectively 
features if we talk about the features of organizing these are the features of organizing number one is it is a continuous process as we know that management is a continuous process because if if we have to if we if there is a work in the organization we have to plan we have to organize we have to staff the people to get it uh, to get the work done we have to direct the people we have to give supervision to the people and last one is we have to control the people like as management is a continuous process the same way organizing is also a continuous process like if there is a work so obviously before after planning we have to organize the things we have to make allotment of the work to the certain people so that's why it is a continuous process it is a function of all the managers yes we it is not this organizing is something or management is something which is not limited or restricted to the certain level that means if in the organization there are three level top level middle level and lower level the same way organizing the same way management is done in all the level the same way organizing will also done by the by all the managers so that means it is not restricted to the one particular level organizing involves coordination yes like we know that in the organizing function only he has to he has to establish he has to establish the relationship between people he has to allot authority and responsibility according to the people interest the same way the coordination is also important because if then if once he has to know that what are their specialization on the basis of that he has to allocate the resources and the uh, work to the people so somehow we can say that coordination is also important between their interests and the responsibility uh, that is going to uh, allot to those that people in, in the same way the responsibility they are going to give on the basis of responsibilities nature only they have to give the authority so that they can work their they can perform their work effectively and efficiently so somehow coordination is is very important while making organizing or while doing this organizing function next one is or goal oriented yes organizing is goal oriented as we as we know that to run the organization or organization main purpose is to achieve a goal or to increase the uh, profit the same way while performing i mean to, to perform organizing function there must be some purpose like it can be uh, it is the main purpose of any organization is to incul uh, it in is to increase the profit the same way if if organizing is uh, is uh, performing in the organization to get the work done properly and effectively so obviously the same way it, it must be a some purpose then only then only this organizing function is going to perform so goal oriented next one is establishing uh, establishes authority and responsibility relationship because this is the only uh, function where manager needs to uh, allot the uh, allot the work or divide the work to the certain people the same way on the basis of the responsibility on the basis of the work he is going to allot to the people the authority and responsibility also need to uh, allot or delegate to the people so in this function only they have i mean manager needs to establish the authority and responsibility relationship that what are their uh, responsibility and on the basis of responsibilities nature they have to allot the authority to the people then only he, they can work effectively and efficiently because if suppose if manager is only divide, giving authority uh, responsibility but without authority is he able to do no he is not able to do his work properly he needs some authority to do a work right like if we take an example of security guard like security work, guard work is to uh, to stop uh, unknown vehicle in the campus right so obviously i mean if the, his responsibility is to uh, take care that any unknown vehicle will not come or enter in the campus the same way he also has a power to stop people uh, to, to stop those vehicle who is unknown to the campus right so somehow the to perform his responsibility that that power also we have to allot to the that particular security guard to work his done effectively right the same way this authority and responsibility needs to go simultaneously and it is basically done in organizing function only organizing involves division of work in organizing only they uh, i mean manager needs to identify the work and on the basis of identification he has to divide the work into a similar uh, into a different different people or the certain uh, type of people so this or uh, division of work is also done in organizing uh, step next one is concept of differentiation and integration this is very important that in organizing only manager needs to take care about 
differentiation and at the same time integration differentiation in what sense that means here he divides the work on the basis of specialization yes so that means the work which is divided and which is going to be a lot to the different different peoples they are unique in nature right suppose if there is a work which is related to a finance or related to the marketing so he has to divide and making into a similar group like marketing work will come in one segment and the financial related work will come in one segment and the hr related work will come in one segment and according to the specialization he will give so that means if we talk about finance department so finance department people will be unique uh, unique or the different with the hr department right but so in this way the while dividing the work and allotting to the work to the different different people the differentiation uh, needs to be there right and the same way integration but yes they are different with each other but they have to work integratedly that means the goal the goal sh uh, uh, should be no common uh, between those people right like ultimate all the departments are working to uh, working for the organization or organization's profit the same way this integration is also important yes different uh, this nature of work nature of work or the department or the skills required is different from each other of every department but the same way they have to work integratedly this, that's why we say that in organizing the two two of the concept or the, or the both the concepts is very important uh, is very important in the organizing function next one is importance if i talk about the importance that why organizing is important in the organization so number one is efficient administration yes if if we if we say that in organizing only uh, manager needs to divide the work to the peoples and allot the work according to their specialization so obviously it would be easy in manager's perspective to manage all the things right because he knows that this person is responsible for this work so he can directly ask to that person or he can directly know that okay he is accountable for this work so in this way in management perspective through organizing uh, he can manage the things according or uh, efficiently and we can say easily or conveniently so that's why we say that organizing is important so that he can he can administer the whole organization efficiently next one is resource optimization that means that if like if uh, there is a if there is a separation of work or the similar work uh, similar work come in in one category in organizing function so obviously resource optimization that means the organize a manager is dividing or allocating the work on the basis of employees interest and their specialization so obviously the work will come or the result will come uh, better right so we can say that uh, some if if one person is specialized in one particular area so while giving or allotting uh, allocating the work same work to the to that particular person will also give a result in a with the optimization resources that means he will he is specialized in that particular work so he will do his work in a better way without wastages without uh, or we can say in a minimum time period or in minim, in a minimum cost so we can say that automatically if we are allotting uh, the work to the specialized persons so obviously resource optimization will be achieved next one is promotes efficient effective communication yes if if manager knows or if a whole organization knows that okay this kind of work if uh, this kind of work will be done by th this group of people right or this particular person right so obviously it would be easy for the manager or for the for the higher authority to to communicate properly because they know because all the work is clarified i mean all the work is clear that which work will be done by which person right so in this way we can say that communication would be effective that means if higher authority needs to ask a uh, uh, result or the performance of specific kind of work though they knows that this kind of work will be done by this person so they are accountable for this so obviously they can directly ask to that pers particular person or the group of people right so obviously if organizing is there so effective communication will also be achieved next aata hai next is create uh, transparency yes uh, if organizing is there like if all the work is uh, divided properly and allotted and allocated to the different kind of people so obviously it is very clarified uh, uh, clarify uh, in the mind of a manager or in the mind of employees that this is the work 
for, for which this kind of people are accountable right so what is that it shows the transparency that means there is no confusion in the mind of employees and in the mind of manager that which person needs to do uh, which person need to do what kind of work so in in this case we can say that transparency is also there that means there is no confusion there is no uh, uh, hidden or there is no uh, we can say that uh, 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 disclarity of work that means uh, uh, disclarity of information that means everyone is uh, very clear that what kind of work will be done by which person next one is expansion and growth if organizing is done in the organization properly so obviously they can think of some different changes like they can think of making a new branch of their organization in different geographical area right so if organizing is done for the current work properly then only they can think of new expansion or the growth of the organization next one is coordination obviously if organizing is there if all the responsibility and authority is clear uh, for, for the employees and for the uh, manager so obviously the coordination would be done in a better way next one is scope for new changes same thing that uh, like if organizing is there i mean if all the responsible if all the uh, this uh, relationship formal relationship is clear if all the responsibility is clear if there is a transparency also obviously the work will be done in a better way and if the current work is done in a better way then only they can think of some new changes that what kind of new changes they can make or they what kind of creativity or innovation they can create in the organization uh, uh, for the sake of growth and expansion so in this way we can say that if organizing is there in the organization so obviously they can think of new changes in the organization for the sake of growth and expansion next one is sense of security yes sense of security in the mind of employees if employee is very clear that what kind of work they are responsible for so obviously they they are so somehow they'll be secured that okay that this is my work that means i also play a very important role in the organization or in this way they can have a sense of security in the organization next one these are the steps these are the steps of organization in which this manager needs to follow well organizing or perform this organizing function number one is identification of activity uh, first of all manager uh, in organizing function first of all manager has to uh, identify the activities that means to to run suppose if there is a new project right and for new project there are number of tasks they have yeah ha they have to i mean he has to get it done right so first of all to to achieve or to make it successful that particular project he has to identify that what kind of task he has to do or he has to get it done by the people so that uh, this project would be a successful project right so first of all he has to identify the activities once he identify the activities then only he will divide the similar activities into a different different departments so then on the basis of uh, after identification of activities he will grouping the activities into a different departments and once he divide the work into the department then he classify the authority the means that means here here he already def define the department and also he allot the responsibility to the people and once he allot the res uh, responsibility to the people he has to classify the authority also like uh, which uh, which kind of uh, department will need what kind of authority so here he has to classify the authority and once these two steps will be done so obviously the coordination of authority and responsibility is also very important which is done by the manager only then we are talking about now the next slide is type of organization right if we talk about type of organization there are two type of organization line organization and the line and staff organization line organization is the simplest and the oldest type of organization line organization is the form of organization wherein the authority flows from the person present at the top of the organization hierarchy to the person working at the lowest uh, level like line organization is what it is the very it is very oldest type of structure which basically where where always uh, it is it is a type of structure or type of organization where authority or concentration of authority is in the is in the one hand or we can say that unity of command is exist in this kind of organization so if we talk about if we talk about the hierarchy so this kind of hierarchy will be made in line structure or we can say if hierarchy in this way so obviously this kind of hierarchy we will call as line organization where concentration of authority is in the one hand right and 
this is the simplest kind of organize, uh, organization and it is suitable for the small organization because here departmentation is not I mean is not exist like uh, here division of work is I mean delegation of authority is there but for the certain time period but but there is no permanent departments in the organization so this type of line organization this type of uh, structure organization structure is known as line organization where the authority flows from present from the person present at the top level and it flows to the lowest level. So, in this way concentration of authority is in the one hand. Under this type of organization authority flows downward and responsibility moves upward. In this kind of organization authority flows downward and responsibility flows upward. That means that authority will be flow uh, downward that means because he has the authority and responsibility means the result the, the work which is done I mean the, the major responsibility will uh, is in the hand of lower level people right because they are more responsible for the work rather than this person. So, obviously responsibility flow uh, flow upward scalar principle and the unity of command are strictly followed in line organization. Yes, if we talk about uh, scalar chain scalar chain also uh, tells the chain of hierarchy right uh, a chain of hierarchy where again authority flows from top to bottom this it this kind this principle this is one of the principles of uh, Henry Fiol right where where they say that uh, that uh, that chain of command will be flow from top to bottom. The same way in line organization also chain, uh, scalar principle followed and, and in the same way unity of command is also flowed in the, uh, in, the in the line organization. This type of organization resembles with the army administration or military type of organization. Line organization is basically uh, uh, a lot uh, we can say that resembled from or we can say it is uh, taken from the military type of organization where there is one, one uh, chief uh, where is one there is one chief and rest of the people has to listen that particular individual right. So, it, so this uh, line organization is basically uh, resembled or we can say it is taken from military type of organization. An organization characteristics of such type of organization is superior subordinate relationship. Yes, in this type of relationship in this type of organization basically tells you that there is one superior and one subordinate that means uh, we cannot that means uh, uh, authority is not divided into the department. Advantages is what that it is a, there is a clear cut relationship that means there is no confusion to whom they have to report. So, they know that like if we talk about like this hierarchy. So, there is a clear cut uh, relationship that he, he is the supervisor and he is the subordinate and for him for him he is the supervisor and he is the subordinate and for him he is the supervisor right. So, same way same way there is a clear cut relationship in the organization. Next one is unity of command yes that, that authority or the responsibility will be uh, will be in, in one hand that is why we say that yes there is a unity of command so people will work without any confusion. Prompt decision making yes if like as we know that in a line organization there is a uh, concentration of authority in one hand so obviously the decision making will be fast and we can say the prompt like because there is no uh, division of authority to the different different people that means uh, somehow the the responsibility or the authority is in the one hand so obviously the decision making would be fast effective coordination yes uh, like there is no confusion there is a prompt decision making so obviously the co coordination would be uh, better why because there is a direct uh, communication between the superior and the, his subordinate Next one is discipline yes as we know that in line organization concentration of authority is in the one hand that means there is only one individual who commands rest of the people. So, obviously discipline would be better in this type of organization Dis disadvantages difficulty in staffing as we know there is no specialized people as we know there is no specialized department. So, obviously to hire the people we have we have people who are who, are, who will be uh, all rounder right and to get the person with all the traits is not is is hardly or he is is not possible so that's why we can say that difficulty in staffing that means to hire the people to with with all the traits is is uh, is rarely or we can say it's it's difficult next one is concentration of authority yes like if we know as we know that uh, in the line organization the authority is in the one hand right so obviously in this way we can say that uh, that people will that means the the intro, the um, the innovation and creativity will lack in this type of organization why because why because uh, there is only one person who decides the thing who who 
gives command to the people so obviously there is no scope of uh, creativity and innovation so in this way we can say that uh, this concentration of authority will be uh, will be a disadvantage uh, for line organization and lack of specialization as i told you that uh, in this kind of organization there is no specialized department like uh, all the all the person has to um, all the person uh, all the people have to be with all the qualities right they so in this way we can say that lack of specialized exists in this type of organization line in staff line in staff organization is the modification of line organization so it is the extension of line organization where it with uh, where this uh, along with the line organization staff organization also exists uh, the line officers have authority to take decisions and implement them to achieve the objectives of the organization while staff officers may give the advice to the line officers here basically hierarchy makes in this way this is the line i told you i made you i, I made this kind of uh, diagram in the previous um, in the previous uh, topic on also like line organization but if we extend it so this become line and staff why because this specialized or department is being created in this type of organization so in this way we can say that ultimate the authority would be in the hand of line organization but uh, but this staff officers are there to give advice to the line officers division of work and the specialization takes place in the line and staff organization as we can see that in this hierarchy the there is a there is a specialization yes like this department that if i talk about if i say that this department is of hr so obviously all the people will be of hr specialized so obviously division of work is exist in this kind of organization and even the specialization also exists in this type of organization there are two lines line authority and staff authority authority that means line author along with the line authority staff authority also exists in this type of organization power of a command remains with the line executives and staff serves only as a counselor staff officer is there but only to advise to the line officers not more than that ultimate approval will be given by the line uh, line uh, no, line executives the whole organization divided into a different functional areas to which speci uh, staff specialists are attached yes in, in line and staff organization basically uh, all the depart all the work will be or we can say the departmentation will be created on the basis of specialization or on the basis of different areas advantages is what that there is uh, ex specialization exists in this type of organization growth and expansion can be possible why because obviously there are uh, specialized people exist in the organization so they, the things the work will be managed in a proper way why because uh, ultimate one person is not there uh, who is liable for everything or who decides everything so obviously responsibility and authority will be divided uh, on the basis of the department so obviously they can think of expansion and growth if there is a line and staff organization lesser burden on line executives as i told you that there is a division of work there is a division of authority and responsibility and in this case we can say that uh, the line executive is not account uh, responsible for everything so in this way lesser burden will be on the uh, in the on the head or on the part of line executives better decisions yes as uh, as specialized people are exist in the in this type of organization so obviously the decision would be better than the line organization training of line executives and line executives will also get learn or will get the opportunity to learn from the specialized of from the staff officers that how to work in this type of uh, or in this particular uh, specialized area disadvantage is what different orientation there might be a there might be a possibility that line and organization at one particular time period line executive and staff executives are not um, agree uh, um, are not agree with each other so obviously this conflict may arise or different orientation can exist conflicts between line and staff it might be possible that there is a conflict between line and staff organization thank you